In this video, we're going to talk about women and plumbing, and we're going to talk about it right now. I'm Roger Wakefield, Lead AP, the expert plumber. I've been plumbing over 38 years, and I have every master endorsement in the state of Texas. On this channel, I'm teaching you everything you need to know about plumbing. If you haven't been here before, please subscribe so you don't miss any. Guys, as you can see, again, I've got a guest, Robert Renfro. Robert and I have actually become friends through plumbing here in the Dallas area, and Man, it's great because I'm union, he's non-union, I'm good looking, he's not. There's a lot of different things that you know we, we have going on. Well, I got a better mustache. Oh, come on. Yeah. Robert Renfro has Facebook pages, Service Plumbers of America, Service Plumbers of Texas, and there's great information on there. And you all know me from here and LinkedIn under Roger Wakefield. And I really want comments about this because I want to know what y'all think. But Robert, we've talked about this before. Women in plumbing, women, women in the trades in general. I've seen welders, I've seen pipe fitters, I've seen plumbers. What do you think about women getting into the plumbing trade? I mean, to tell you the truth, some of the smartest plumbers I've ever met was not you, it was, it was ladies that are in the workplace. You hurt my feelings, man. <laughs> but uh, I mean, the two ladies you had in here the other day, you know, Mary Conger and, and Diane Valeril, I'd put them up against any man in a trade. You know, and, and I, I said that when I made the videos with them. I, I was like, look, th these are two of the smartest women I know in plumbing. And I mean, I mean there, there's a lot of other ones. You know, Frances Lang is, is very smart, uh, and she's plumbing down in Houston. Uh, Debbie Vukovic, who is the apprentice training coordinator over here in Dallas. And, you know, it, it's funny because I almost feel like women have to work harder to prove themselves. And, 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 and let, hold on, let me finish because I saw the look on your face. I feel like they do work harder, not that they have to. And I, I, I didn't yes. mean it that way. I don't think they have to work harder, but I think that they do to prove themselves. And they end up excelling beyond most men in this trade. Yeah, and, and you know, the, the trade has been a, a, a mainly man-dominated trade for a long time. I'm seeing people come into the trade now that, that you know, they're female. They they have a lot better uh, communications with the customers. They have great sales numbers, and they can do anything the man can do. I, 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 I mean, I can't say it enough that that you know we have to as a trade we have to stop being chauvinistic and 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 you know acting like this can only be done by by men because I have female plumbers that work for me. I've worked with female plumbers. Great plumbers, man. I mean, just great plumbers. And, and and to me, working around the ones that I've worked around, they, it's it's like they focus more on doing everything right. Where yeah. a guy may just get in a hurry. Hey, look, I'm just going to throw it in. And you know, I and I don't know. Maybe that's profiling or something like that. But I just. I think, and I tell people this all the time, because I go speak to RISD, the 7th and 8th graders. I went the other day and spoke to another group, and I always tell them, look, that plumbing is not a male trade. No. Plumbing is a job that, that is good for men or women, either one, because getting into this trade, it, 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 the physical part of it isn't that bad. Well, what's the difference between a single father with two kids trying to earn a good living and a single mother with two kids trying to earn a good living? There's really no difference. So, you know, as a trade, we can't be, um, as a whole, we have to be, you know, open to everything. And it's it's not just women. It's, it's, it's everything. You know, I see a great uh, disposition in African-American and white plumbers, and I don't like that either. I think that there should be... Uh, uh, a great push to to bring in all different people to our trade. I mean, we have a shortage of plumbers. People don't want to do it. You know, uh, maybe we stop looking at the things we used to look at to, to recruit plumbers and say, okay, let's think outside the box. That's, you know, is this housewife or, or this lady or, you know, is she making enough money to, to get by and can we help her? And if you look at it from that standpoint, you know, you got your plumbers. You know, I, I love the fact that the, the, the trades are open to anybody, and, and anybody can get in. I don't necessarily know that, that I see so much racial difference because when I was an instructor, it, it was almost 50-50. So, you know, I, I've, I don't see that as much. I, I do know that women, 
were always, I, I mean, I think out of six or seven classes I had, I had one or two women, and that was it. And it's not because the women didn't make the cut, that they weren't applying for the positions. And I truthfully think if you're a woman and you are not going to college out of high school, that this is not a bad trade to get into. No, and, and, and to your point about minorities, all I'm saying is that is that we could create a program that would go not just to certain high schools, but go to all high schools in all parts of town and all economic areas and really give people a pathway to success. Well, you know? I'll tell you something you may not know about. Okay. I'm involved with RISD. They're getting ready to start doing that here in Richardson. Mm -hmm. They're emulating a program that's being done in Wilmer Hutchins that Mary Conger is actually part of, and I don't know if she wrote the syllabus for it or what, but she's an instructor through Northlake. When I was an instructor for the Local 100 JATC, I was through Northlake, and she helped put the syllabus together, if I'm not mistaken, for Wilmer Hutchins, and they are actually moving this over to Richardson, and students coming into high school are gonna be able to say, hey look, I'm not going to college, but I wanna be a plumber, and you've got a training program, and if I'm not mistaken, after four years of training, and I'm sure that there's some ride along or this or that, but they get quite a bit of hours yeah, for and that time. There, and, and two, you know, you've got to think of it like this. We took shop out of schools. We're, we're just now seeing what happened because of doing that. You know, you can go to someone's house right now, and they have never even seen a plunger. You know, they, they don't know how to, to turn a nut. Back when I grew up in this trade, the average homeowner could do about 60% of everything they did, yeah. you know. Because we learned it in school. Because we learned it in school. Well, mm -hmm. now you can't, you know. You, you didn't learn it. You, you learned how to, you know, get on the Internet and Facebook and YouTube. and. But but you know what? YouTube works. Yeah. I mean, I get messages all the time. People and, and women get on and say, hey, look, I appreciate you putting that video out. I fixed my toilet. But, but, but Roger, what, what you lose in that, what you lose in that being gone is the ability to go out and try. And and I say that, that the things that make a great plumber is not man, woman, black, white, Hispanic. It is the ability to not ask questions and get into it and fix it. Mm -hmm. Not you know, that's what you don't have now. You hire a helper and and he's never done anything and you say, Okay, tear that valve apart and fix it. And if you break it, I'm just gonna change the valve. Just tear it apart and fix it. They look at you like Right. You know, what do I take that screw out with? You know, mm -hmm. it's like, and and you know that, that without any plumbing knowledge, when you was eight or nine or 10 years old, you was taking your lawnmower apart. Oh, absolutely. You, was, you know? Absolutely. But, but, but I had dad's toolbox. Yeah. You know, I, I knew that I could do it. And, and I'll tell you what, and, and it's funny that we're talking about this right now because just this last week, I was in Eastern Kentucky on a, a church youth mission trip. And we did flooring. Okay. But... We had to install a girder and replace a lot of the underpinning, the subflooring. And I had two girls on my crew, and, and they both worked their tails off. Oh, yeah. Now, one of them wanted to get under the house. She's like, look, I want to get muddy. I want to have fun. I want to enjoy this. And to replace that girder, we had to dig three holes, 16 by 16 by 16, under a house where you've only got about two feet of room. And this girl, I mean, I kept saying, you want me to come help you? I called her Mudbug. I said, Mudbug, you want me to come over and help you? And she's like, no, no, no. I want to do this myself. I want to be able to say, I started it, I finished it, I did it myself. Yeah. And this girl worked her tail off. I had another guy, same way. He wanted to do the same thing. So I had a guy and a girl that both wanted under the house, wanted to work in the mud. They, they didn't care. It didn't bother them. But the other two worked above the floor and worked their tails off, too. And either one of these women could say, look, I want to get into plumbing, and I'd be like, I'll help you. Yeah, and, and that's, that's the thing. So if you think of the common, and, and you know, I'm, I'm not speaking as any plumbing company, but I'm saying there are plumbing companies out there that when they look at bringing a female into the trades, they think of things that are not related to the trade. They think of sexual discrimination. They think of what the, the male plumber's wife is going to think riding around with a female. We had this, prop, we had this conversation about a year ago. We, and, and, yeah, and you know where I was working. You and, bet. And, 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 you know, I had a big problem with it because 
you can't take a disciplinary issue and make it reflect all female plumbers. That that's wrong on every level. I mean, you got a girl that's that's wanting to do this and make a career out of it and do it good, and you want to. To me, it's discrimination. It is. You know, uh, uh, the situation you explained to me at the time is was nothing but discrimination. It's nothing. It's no difference than saying. Well, I don't want you riding with a black plumber, or I don't want you riding with a Hispanic plumber. You can't do that. Right. Someone's wife's feelings about who they're riding with doesn't come into workplace. And, 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 if, and if it does, your problem's with that plumber, not the female apprentice you're wanting exactly. to put with him. Exactly. So, you know, I completely see that. Now, my, my, my next question is, because my thought is I'm a residential service plumbing company, how hard is the work? And I've got apprentices with my guys. Mm -hmm. So if it was a, a female with a guy apprentice, they could work together. If she became a plumber, I hired a plumber and had an apprentice with her. You know, the, the hardest thing we may do is lift a water heater in the attic, lift a water heater up on an 18-inch stand, stuff like that. I mean, nobody digs anymore. We hire a digging done mostly. Absolutely. You know, so. Or, or if we do, it's just, hey, dig up this valve box. Yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's something that We're not digging tunnels. And, you know, back in the old days, you dug everything yourself. But, hey, I got a high school girl who can dig a 16 by 16 by 16 hole by herself. Well, I'm, not, not I'm not saying that, that the girl couldn't do it. All I'm saying is that the work's not that hard you, you anymore. Bet. Uh, but the hardest thing I can think of is lifting a water. Yeah, and, 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 and I'll tell you, the, the girl that works for me, I'd put her up against anybody. I mean, she's just a she's just a workhorse. She never takes a day off sick. She can sell to anybody. She, she is dynamic throughout everything I do, and I would never, uh, I would never let anybody discriminate on one of my plumbers. No, no, it just never would happen. No, and, and I believe that from the conversations that we've had. Yeah. So, if it's not that hard of work, why aren't women getting into it? I think the, it's the that stigma. I think it's that stereotype of you know. Uh, I think we need. I don't want to say more, but I think people like Mary and Diane, you know, they really need to be hitting these high schools and saying, look, we're women and we're plumbers, you know, and, and, uh, you know, to me, I feel a great sense of pride when I'm around those two, you know, they're, oh, yeah. they're great plumbers, you know, I mean, I want to just go through the place where I can go, Hey, these are plumbers, you know, mm -hmm. these are master plumbers. I, I don't know, maybe I'm, I'm wrong for doing that. I've went to Diane's CE class every year for the last 15 years. Not because she's a woman, but because she's the smartest plumber I know. She is. You know? Uh, so that says a lot about how... Or Russell Wyman in the office with her. They're, they're yeah. both extremely I mean, intelligent. I mean, and, and we have our differences on Lisa Hill, but she's an extremely smart plumber. Mm -hmm. And she's the chief, chief building inspector for the state of Texas. You know, she's the highest office there is, and she's female. And, and you know what? She's over a whole lot of male plumbers. Yes, she is. What can we do to help women get into the trades? Not, and not, I'm not just talking plumbing. Electrical, HVAC, these are jobs that I think any woman can do. And, you know, like I said, whenever I go out and talk to 7th and 8th graders, I always tell them, girls, look, this is something y'all can do. And, and, I mean, making these videos, if you've got a woman on your crew, if you're a plumber and you've got a woman on your crew or at your company, leave us a comment down below. Does she do a good job? It, can she handle it? Does she outwork you? And, and I want you to be honest about it. So, you know, leave me a comment down below and, and let us know what you think. But by making these videos, hopefully we get information out. But what can we do to help women get into the trade? Man, I'll tell you, the, the best thing you can do if you're, if you're wanting to become a plumber, and, and I say it genderless, I don't care what gender you are. Uh, if you want to be a plumber, get on one of my pages. You can have a job in 15 minutes. I just tell you, my pages are known for, uh, you know, you can literally put a, put something on there and in, in 10 minutes you've got six or seven companies saying, come over here, I need to talk to you. You know, so get on either one of those pages and uh, let us know you want to be a plumber, whoever you are, and we'll get you, get you in the right spot. So if you're interested, leave a message down here. You can find him on Facebook, Service Plumbers of America and Service Plumbers of Texas. Leave us a comment down below and let us know what do you think about women in the trades. I have no problems with it at all. I actually often said I think it's a great thing. If you like these videos, give us a thumbs up and check out some of the other ones because we've got a lot of them out there to help teach people plumbing. So hopefully you've enjoyed this and hopefully you stick around watching another one. 
I'm Roger Wakefield, Elite AP, the expert plumber, and I'll see you if you don't get flushed.